Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And when he made that known, he made known what we should ought to prioritize and made known the order in which we ought to prioritize. He said, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. You see, one of the lessons that I've always learned ever since I was young was this idea and this principle of focus. Every time I've tried to do something, whether it's academia, academia or whether it's sports, whatever it may be, one of the things that people always teach you is if you really want to be successful in whatever you do, you need to have this concept of focus where you're single-minded on this idea and you're just striving at it with all that you got. And so when I think about this, I think, you know what, if I truly want to be the Christian God has called me to be, if I truly want to have true discipleship and know what it means to be like Jesus, I need to have this constant focus on Christ, a focus on His kingdom, on His righteousness, on Him. Because when I realize that when I focus on Jesus, everything else in life tends to come about. And when I focus on Him, things are the way that they ought to be. And so when I think about my Christian walk, I just want to say, I want to focus on Jesus. But one of the things that I understand is, Part of the reason why we struggle as Christians so much is that we don't focus on Jesus. And the reason why it's so hard to focus on Jesus and to live that Christian walk is because we get distracted very easily. It's hard to focus on Christ and His kingdom and His righteousness when we're focusing about everything else. And one of the things that I've learned is that one of the major things that gets our focus off of Jesus and His kingdom and His righteousness are things that cause us to be worried and anxious and stressed out, isn't it? You see, one of the things that I, I was talking with a friend of mine earlier this week, and she made a comment that I really resonated with. She said, you know what? I want to love Jesus. I want to serve Jesus and all these different things. But honestly, even when I go to worship service, sometimes when we're singing songs and my eyes are closed and I'm listening to a sermon, I'm not focusing on Jesus. And it's really hard to just worship Him because I'm thinking about all the things that stressed me out during the week. I'm thinking about everything that I know are going to be coming at me 100 miles per hour this next week and they're just going to hit me hard. And it's really hard to just focus on the goodness and the grace and the forgiveness of Jesus when I'm stressing about everything else. And I thought about that for a moment and I thought, you know what, I've been guilty of that before. Where sometimes where I've come to worship service and the whole time I should be thinking about the message of Jesus, the message of the cross, and everything about Jesus Christ so that I can focus on his kingdom, focus on his righteousness. But all the time I think, here's some things that just really stress me out. Some things that I'm just really struggling with, worried about, anxious. And one of the things that I thought about was, that is actually what actually causes us to lose our focus on Jesus Christ. It's the stress, this worry, the anxiety, the problems of the world. We're always going to have problems. But how are we going to really deal with those problems? But the focus is we need to focus on Jesus. But if I understand so much of my focus is lost when, I, when I'm worried, then I need to conquer worry. Because oftentimes, have you noticed that when something is really overcoming you, it just consumes your life. For me, sometimes when I think about things that make me worried or stressed or anxious, I have a hard time sleeping at night. And I can literally hear my heart beating and I'm sweating and I'm just thinking to myself, I, you know what, there's all these things that need to get done. Here's some things that are on my heart. Here's some things on my mind. And oftentimes it can overwhelm me to the point where I just lose track of Jesus. I may even do some of those things for Jesus and be stressed out by the things for Jesus, but sometimes I just lose focus off of Jesus himself when actually he is the priority. I mean, I don't know about you, but I know so often I get distracted by the stresses of this world. But one of the things that I found really interesting is that Jesus actually doesn't want us to be worrisome, anxious, or stressed out. Because one of the things that he know, makes known is he wants us to focus on him, focus on his kingdom and righteousness. But we can't do that when we're consuming all of our time and all of our energy and all of our thinking on things that worry us and stress us out. One of the things that really interested, that really got me thinking was this passage that in Matthew 6 where it says, 
seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. But when he says that, Jesus is actually saying that in between messages that is sandwiched in between, which says, don't worry. Before and after he says, seek first my kingdom, he says, don't worry. Because worry thwarts faith. Worry thwarts focus on Christ. Worry causes us to doubt God. And it causes us to lose our focus on Him. And so one of the reasons why Jesus really doesn't want us to worry is because it causes us to lose track of what's really first and foremost important in our lives. And that is His kingdom and His righteousness. And I know that it's so hard to not be stressed and worrisome. I'm telling you, when it comes to my Christian walk, this is probably one of the things that I actually struggle with the most. And this is why it's so important. But one of the things that we see over and over again is that God is a God of peace. And that God doesn't want you to be anxious and stressed. But instead, He wants you to take delight in Him. He wants you to live a life of joy. He wants you to have a life of peace. And the way to do that is when we're centered and focused on Him rather than the things of this world that cause us to be worried and stressed. I mean, look at what Jesus says here. He shows us the fruitlessness of actually being worried. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 through 34, it says this. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon, all his splendor, was dressed like one of these. And that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire. Will he not much more clothe you? Oh, you of little faith. So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And Luke chapter 12, verse 25 and 26 also says this, Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? Since you cannot do this very thing, why do you worry about the rest? You see, I think read messages like that, and I think, you know, we worry about so much of the things of this world. Well, how am I going to take care of this situation? How can I provide for my family in this way, and this and that? And you know, we get so overwhelmed with worry that we become those people that Jesus is saying, you know what, you have little faith. Why, why? Don't you believe in God? Don't you know his character? Don't you know that he knows that you know these, need these things and he cares about you? I mean, God has always provided. Look at nature. That's the evidence that he provides, even for animals that are less important than you. But he says, trust me. He says, seek first my kingdom and my righteousness. And if you'll do that, then I'll provide all these other things. I mean, he, he makes known a condition. You, if you, I'll provide for you, but you have to first prioritize me. But the amazing thing is, when we prioritize Christ, things tend to be so much better. And why is that? I I think about a statement where I think about stress, and it's so often that when you go to the doctor, they say stress, worry, anxiety, they all kill you physically. But one of the things that we also understand is those very things also kill you spiritually. And that's why we need to not be anxious and worrisome and stressed out. Because it takes off our faith off of God. It takes us off our focus off of Christ. But when we're focused on Christ, then things get better in our lives. Because we're putting the first things first. One of the things that we have to understand is if we truly want to have a life that is beneficial, we need to emphasize God. You see, one of the things that I noticed is when I focus on God, and I emphasize God, and I center my life around God... Everything else seems so unimportant. You know, I think about my job, I think about my house, I think about my car, I think about all these things, but guess what? All those things are one day going to come to an end and be destroyed. But your relationship with God won't, as long as you're faithful to Him. It's like, which is more important? Something that's going to last forever, or something that's been...